okay guys welcome back now in this video we'll be looking at social groups and institution now we're still we're underneath the topic of social groups and institution right now first we must ask what are social groups a social group can be defined as a group that consists of two or more people now this involves communication, interaction with each other, and as you know, they normally have the same interest. Now, social groups can be found in different areas or sections of society, right? And normally have a greater, strong influence on its members. Now, you might not know, but a group and a social group are different. Say, for instance, you might have a group of teenagers who meet every Friday evening for studies with the aim of passing a test. Now, that would be considered a social group. While you have a group of people sitting in the airport together awaiting their flight, that would be considered a group, right? Now, this is normally temporary. The group is normally temporary. A social group is more. It can be temporary, but on a long-term basis, as well as it is it can be permanent right so learn the difference guys right all right so we are going to go into types of social groups now types of social group this includes first up first up we have the primary social groups right second we have the secondary social group third we have formal and informal groups, right? Now, we'll be looking in these in detail. So first up, we'll be looking at primary social groups. Now, what is a primary social group really? Right? You might ask. Now, a primary social group, are, um, it is normally small and more personal, right? So the relationship with our members within this primary group, within the primary group, are very close as well as personal. You know, like face-to-face -face in a close and small space, right? Now, for example, like your family members or friends, or it could be a, your significant others and friends as well, right? So that is primary social group in a nutshell, right? So moving on to secondary social group right now what is social um, secondary social group now primary groups can be found in the secondary social groups right so it is really a larger group which is more impersonal and tend to be goal oriented right now relationships and interactions are less personal and more formal and are based more on mutual interest in the function of the group. Now, membership of secondary social groups has less influence on a member's um, sense of identity or feelings of belonging that um, membership of a primary group would carry, right? Now, examples of a secondary group are um, like schools, churches, youth club, organization and you get the gist right secondary groups often um contain primary groups as i said before for example friendship groups from spontaneous um it, it normally forms spontaneously within a church or a school or you know anywhere there is um you have a a group of person with the same interest as i said before right now in some circumstances it is the relationships of members of these smaller primary groups that helps to keep the larger secondary group together right all right so we're moving on to formal and informal groups right formal and informal groups what is this really formal groups has structures right such as rules and orders right while informal group normally has the opposite no rules or orders so it's really self-explanatory there now 
social groups can also be categorized as either formal or informal as you know right so it's still a social group right based largely on how the groups are organized a sport club and a rotary club are examples of formal groups friends who meet for non-directed leisure or recreational activities right these are examples of informal group right informal groups can sometimes form within a formal group too right right so as i said before a sport a sport club or rotary club are examples of a formal group formal group informal group sorry they are the ones that you know do informal stuff like maybe you know have a bunch of friends or whatever it is our group of friends come together to to just hang out and you know have recreational activities and those stuff all right guys i think you get the gist right so moving on we're moving on to characteristics of social groups right so what are the characteristics of the social group now first we're going to look at structure and leadership right now structure and leadership what is that formal groups have a clearly defined hierarchical structure giving a clear line of authority levels now aspect of the organization including the structure um structure of the organization rules to be followed and general procedures may be recorded um, recorded or uh, written down right right so an informal group though has no clear structure and no set lines of authority although a leader may emerge from within the group no this person will not have a formal authority but will create ideas motivate others and make things happen but it is not formal right so next up we're going to look at membership membership of a social group is either voluntary or involuntary in um the voluntary membership individuals use their own criteria to decide whether or not to join a group while you have involuntary membership of a group occurs when um an in individual has no choice about being a member as when you know people are born into a particular family or society they have no choice right so that's involuntary right so next up we're going to look at marks of identity marks of identity what is this right many groups have a way of uh, marking out members from non-members right uniforms are an obvious example and are used by schools scout and guide groups sports drama and dance clubs right the armed forces the police and other emergency services also have uniforms to distinguish them from the members of the public right so that is um those are marks of identity uniforms badges whatever it is right so next up we'll be looking at behavior right all social groups develop expectations for behavior for example even members of arm um, informal friendship groups expect other members to be honest right they expect them to be honest open and respectful whether it's formal or informal right in a formal group the rules are more likely to be formulated agreed and written down some rules may even guide interaction between members when for example individuals with a certain status have to be addressed in a given manner right in the informal groups a member who does not behave as expected will feel the disapproval of other members right and may even be excluded from the group formal groups have established procedures for dealing with the mem uh, members who do not follow the rules right but informal doesn't really have that they just you know feel left out instead right so next up we have common characteristics of members right members of a group share a vision 
for what they hope the group will achieve, need which they hope will be met through membership of the group, interests which are the focus of the group, similar values which will be reflected in the activities of the group. So these are the common characteristics of members within a group, right? Now, moving on. Next up, we'll have special social groups. What are these? Special social group. First up, we have the peer groups, right? Now, a peer group is made up from people who are of similar age, from similar backgrounds, who share experiences. Now, interests and values are very important within the peer group as well. Now, peer groups often consist of friends, but this is not always the case. Your class is a peer group, but this doesn't mean that all the class members are friends, right? So you get what the um, peer group is about, right? So moving on, next we have pressure groups. What are pressure groups? All right, so pressure groups exist to influence public opinions or public policy. They usually um, promote an interest which goes beyond their membership. Examples of pressure groups um, can include um, those set up to lobby government to introduce um, a health measure or such as smoking ban or maybe to promote an end to a certain kind of discrimination or to protect environmental um, sensitive areas, right? So those are pressure groups going out for people, right? Or going out for a certain cause, right? So next up, we'll have interest groups, right? Interest groups. Interest groups consist of people who wish to work together, possibly in influencing public opinion, right? Or in lobbying government as well, in protect, in protecting a particular interest um, or benefit they have, right? Professional or national association of hotel owners, manufacturers of food producers are example of interest groups. Now, these groups seek to promote cooperation among their members, right? Now, interest in the support for their particular sector of the economy and liaison with relevant government departments and agencies. Now, as I said, interest group, meaning it's for their own self-interest and for persons in the same, within the same field, right? So, that would be interest group. Now... Here endeth my video, right? Now, guys, I want to tell you thanks for everything that you have done for me, especially the ones who have subscribed. Now, that's it. As I said before, this is the end of my video. So, I want to um, urge who have not subscribed as yet to do so. This is in order to know when I release a new video. If my video was helpful to you, you can just like or subscribe and share, right? So guys, thank you for doing the good jobs. So, bye.